This is Rob Stagenborg. I'm the producer of Mind Games, Psychology of Performance. This week, host Tom Mickler and Tom Schwartz visited with the U.S. National Men's Soccer Coach, Assistant Coach, Mike Sorber, local guy from Florissant. Great talk. Let's take a listen. On 590 The Fan, KFNS, St. Louis's sports leader. Welcome to Mind Games Radio, the show that explores the psychology of performance. This edition of Mind Games is brought to you by our friends at Soccer Master, where St. Louis goes to soccer shop. They have everything from the best soccer boots to official Manchester United shirts. Visit one of their St. Louis locations and tell them that you heard about them on Mind Games Radio. I'm Tom Schwarz, along with Tom Mickler, and we'll be your host as we talk to successful people about just how it is they do what they do. Speaking of successful people, hello Bono, I know you're listening. We're pleased to welcome Mike Sorber into the studio as our first live guest. For those of you who don't know, Mike is a local guy who starred in soccer at St. Louis University, played in the MLS, and gained over 70 caps with the United States national team. God, I hope I pronounced this correctly. Bora Militanovic? No, I didn't. Uh, Militanovic? Bora, Bora. Bora Bora. The, co- <laughs> the coach of the U.S. team said that Mike was the MVP of that 94 World Cup team. He went on to play in Mexico and was the first American ever to be voted an all-star in Mexico. All pro- playing careers must end, and Mike went back to work as coaching at his alma mater, St. Louis U. Several years later, he was named assistant coach of the U.S. men's national team, where he remains today. Mike's dad is the legendary coach, Pete Sorber, who has 10 national JUCO championships. Pete will join us later in the show. Mike a long, strange trip indeed. Thanks for joining us. Mike, I'm going to just really jump right into the soccer part here. I mean, we're talking, obviously, today about soccer. And I, as a player myself, uh, having played the game all my life, I'm really intrigued with what Boris said about you, the unofficial MVP of the U.S. team. What was it? that would make him say that? What was it about your game? What did you do for that team that would have earned you that kind of a title from Bora? Yeah, you know, that that's a, a pretty nice comment coming from the head coach. Um, you know, I, I think the position I played, being in the center of the midfield, um, that's really the center of all the action. And so, you know, you had to have somebody in there who understood his role, somebody who could connect all the pieces or all the dots, which were all my teammates around me, and then somebody who you know was consistent and, and that you could rely on and that you knew uh, what he was going to bring to to each game. And, and each game at that level can be, can be very different. So, um, you know, I, I think as a team, you know, we did well. We started off with a good game in Detroit. Uh, we put in a solid performance. We tie that game one-to-one. Then we head out to the Rose Bowl and we beat uh, Columbia in in a two one hard fought game, uh, and then you know the third game against Romania ends up probably being our best played game, but we lose one zero and then we move into the to the next round where we play Brazil, uh, who went on to win the World Cup, uh, and in, in another actually pretty good game for the U.S., mm-hmm. but we end sure. up losing one zero. is in part because well, we want to keep our parents uh, happy so they keep paying. Your thoughts about that? No, there's no question that, that this has evolved into a business. And, you know, in the rest of the world, they don't use this business model. It doesn't exist. And and they have proven that, that they produce the best players. And, you know, that's why their national teams are competing for the World Cup. And so if you look at the level of high school soccer or the level of college soccer or the level of MLS and then ultimately what does our national team look like um, this is what we're producing this is reality and so it's not the right environment it's not the best things 
uh, or the best thing for development. There's no question about it. But it exists in our country, and so the reality is we have to deal with it and try to move it along, not necessarily put a bunch of people out of work, especially in today's economy. Um, but we have to figure out what's going to be the best model. Right now we have this academy league where you know there are some kids who are sponsored and if they don't have the funds. And so we're trying to find the best players and get them into this environment. Um, but until Major League Soccer and the professional teams get their academies up and running and, and fully funded uh, for all kids, this is a part of, of our world. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back just a little bit, and I'm going to say maybe some of them should have never been employed in this arena. And go oh, ahead, oh, put oh, them oh. out of work, really. I mean, and, and here's this is the, the perspective of a guy that has a real passion for the game. Uh, I went to, they had a chance when I was in high school in 1975 to go to Europe and play. Uh, with high school uh, teammates, CBC and DeSmet, and we got our butts kicked. In 2009, I had a chance to go to Europe with my brother Terry uh, on the Dutch Touch program. Uh, we played in Holland, and we got our butts kicked. And not much had really seemed to change. And, and one of the outstanding features, one of the outstanding differences, along with technical superiority, was the physical play in of the Dutch uh, Every time that there was a contest for the ball or any type of intersection between one of our players and one of their players, boy, they put their body on us big time. I mean, are we raising soft kids in these systems? Are we just keeping people happy? I mean, this is, this is just kind of a stream of consciousness off the top of my head. I don't know if you want to speak to any of that, but this is just kind of how it looks to me, and it's just pretty frustrating, actually. Yeah, no, I think, you know, it, it's more about – you know the the environment that the european kid grows up in and and the competition that he's playing against mm -hmm. versus what what type of what type of competition do our kids play in and again usually they play at their own age group um they're never really challenged um to the extent that they need to be and you know really steel forms in a hot fire and and mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we need for our players that y you try to figure out you know who has talent, not only talent, but who can really um, make decisions and figure things out to become a good player. Look forward to bringing you back, everybody, next week as a listener. Thanks for joining us today on 590 The Fan, KFNS, KFNS.com. Mike and Pete, thanks again. All right, Tom. Thank you. Thanks. See you next week, folks. Remember, Mind Games on 590 The Fan, KFNS, and KFNS.com.